violent tornadoes, defined as those producing estimated wind speeds of more than 165 miles per hour, or rated EF4 and EF5 on the enhanced Fujita scale of tornado intensity, are an extremely rare phenomena. In fact, they represent only 2% of the tornadoes that occur across the United States. But despite their rarity, they are responsible for around 70% of the approximately 60 tornado-related deaths that occur each year. We typically associate violent tornadoes with the Great Plains. However, on May 5th, 1989, residents of several communities across the Piedmont of the Western Carolinas learned that our area is not at all immune from outbreaks of violent tornadoes. One such community was Toluca, North Carolina. The small community on the Lincoln-Cleveland County border was devastated by an F4 tornado during the evening of May 5, 1989. Mobile homes were swept away and reduced to unrecognizable piles of rubble. Vehicles were lifted and tossed hundreds of yards. Well-constructed homes were completely flattened. The residents of this and other communities had little or no warning of the devastating tornadoes. Unfortunately, this was the norm 25 years ago, when only about half of all tornadoes were preceded by tornado warnings, and lead times of even successful warnings were typically less than five minutes. The events of the 5th began with a small area of low pressure and associated upper air disturbance and associated large-scale rising motion across the lower Mississippi Valley and Tennessee Valleys, as indicated by the cool cloud tops in the satellite imagery. Ahead of this cloud mass, the atmosphere became increasingly unstable throughout the day across the western Carolinas and North Georgia. The approach of the upper air disturbance and small low pressure area prompted the NSSFC to issue a tornado watch for much of Georgia and western upstate South Carolina. By 4 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, explosive thunderstorm development was occurring across North Georgia, as indicated by the rapid cooling and cloud top temperatures at the end of this loop. The first tornado of the day, rated as F1, occurred after 4 p.m. as a line of severe thunderstorms moved through the Gainesville, Georgia area. A subsequent tornado occurred near Toccoa, Georgia. These initial tornadoes and the intensifying line of storms prompted the NSSFC to issue a tornado watch number 185 that included most of South Carolina and much of the North Carolina Piedmont. The watch included potentially dangerous situation wording, or PDS wording, a phrase that is reserved for the most serious situations in which the potential for especially strong tornadoes is high. This phrase is typically only included with a handful of tornado watches each year. We followed the Georgia storms pretty closely. And we got word from Athens that there had been a tornado that hit, I think, a Revco. And it turns out it was a strip mall or something. Yeah. And we knew that there was significant damage with that. That was pretty clearly associated with the line of storms. But we noted that a cell developed, either jumped out ahead of the line from the line or developed slightly ahead of the line. I don't remember which. But we noticed it accelerating away from the line mm -hmm. quite, quite rapidly. And um, whereas the line may have been moving at 35 or 40 knots, the cell seemed to us to be moving at 50 or 60. That cell was the one that would eventually hit the Chesney area. And it had um, virtually no radar presentation. Funnel cloud reported by the public prompted WSO Greer to issue a tornado warning that included Spartanburg County. The tornado developed around 6.20 p.m. between Paris Bridge Road and Peachtree Road, just south of Rainbow Lake. It quickly intensified as it moved rapidly northeast between 50 and 60 miles an hour. Several cottages were destroyed on Rainbow Lake. The tornado continued rapidly northeast, roughly paralleling Paris Bridge Road, claiming its first victim in this home on Martin Camp Road, where a 59-year-old man was killed when the ch home's chimney fell on him. On Martin Camp Road, the tornado traveled more than two miles over large, largely unpopulated areas and farmland. Mobile homes were lifted and tossed several hundred feet in the area around Turkey Farm Road and Labor Camp Road. All that was left of this home were the concrete stairs after it was tossed about 100 yards.
Several high-tension towers were toppled in this area as well. These towers were designed to withstand wind speeds of at least 100 miles an hour. The tornado reached its maximum size, more than a half mile in width, and peak intensity as it moved across the Arrowwood community along Highway 11 northwest of Chesney, particularly in the area around Old Island Ford Road, Henderson Road, and McCabe Road. Dozens of homes in this small community were damaged or destroyed, including well-constructed frame homes such as this one, which probably experienced F4 level winds. Violent tornado claimed another victim as it moved northeast along Old Island Ford Road toward Cherokee County. A 66-year-old woman was killed apparently while attempting to flee this mobile home, which was lifted and tossed into a peach orchard. From there, the tornado crossed extreme northwest Cherokee County, entering Rutherford County, North Carolina, in the area around Montgomery Road. The tornado crossed the Broad River and Highway 221 before lifting a couple of miles southwest of Henrietta. Despite the very rural nature of this area, the tornado destroyed more than a half dozen homes and damaged more than two dozen in Rutherford County. Although reports of the damage near Chesney began trickling into NWS Greer around the time the tornado lifted, the extent and severity of the damage was not yet known, and the slow communication networks at the time prevented timely transmission of the reports to neighboring NWS offices and emergency preparedness officials. A tornado warning was never issued for Cleveland County. My pager went off that uh, we were under a severe thunder warning that there was a severe thunderstorm approaching. They did say that there was some severe weather uh, to our south. We were not aware of any, any damage at that time. At that time, I said, listen to that wind blowing. And she looked out the window and she said, the wind's not blowing. And I said, yes it is. I said, listen to that. You can hear it howling around the house. And the trees were as still as they could be. And about that time, boom, this severe thunderstorm was just on top of it. It's a matter of a few seconds later, probably, my pager went that a tornado had struck the house. The tornado touched down on Monty Road, north of Lawndale, completely destroying this log home on Kayser Lawndale Road shortly after developing. The tornado gained strength as it moved northeast at over 50 miles an hour, destroying a home and several outbuildings on Elam Road. The tornado continued to produce major damage of at least F2 intensity as it crossed Teal Road, and Warlick Road. A home was removed from its foundation and another severely damaged on Queen Road. Significant damage continued as the tornado moved rapidly northeast across Sand Pit Road and Acre Rock Road. The tornado was at its most intense, producing F3 to F4 damage in the Toluca community. This church was destroyed on Highway 18. The tornado was at least one half mile in width at this point, and just about every structure within about a quarter mile of the Highway 18, Highway 27 intersection along the Cleveland County border was severely damaged or completely destroyed. Several well-constructed frame homes were flattened, including this one on Highway 18. All four of the fatalities associated with the tornado occurred in this area. Three of the deaths occurred in vehicles that were tossed several hundred yards. The tornado continued northeast, paralleling Highway 18,
to the Highway 10 intersection. Although it was beginning to weaken by this time, F2 to F3 damage was observed along Highway 10 in northwest Lincoln County. The tornado continued in the southwest Catawba County before lifting in the Props community. There's been only one F4 tornado in the Western Carolinas since May 5, 1989. However, there have been many close calls. The color splotches in this image are plots of radar indicated rotation during the April 27, 2011 historic tornado outbreak. The lines represent confirmed tornadoes. Our area was spared the brunt of this outbreak. However, what if the responsible storm system had been just a few hours faster to coincide with peak daytime heating? We may not be as lucky next time. Now is the time to prepare for the next violent tornado outbreak.